All right, everyone, this is Cameron, your host of Get a Load of This. Uh, today is going to be an awesome, awesome show. And I've got special co host with me, Ryan Young. He's a producer with me at Valley Trucking Insurance. Ryan, what's happening, man? What's what going up? on, how's everybody? The, Good morning. How's the weather up in the uh, DC, Coast. Canada? Uh, well, it's nice the last two days, and now it's cold and rainy. It's like on the verge of snowing, but I don't think it has. So there we go. It's not I too bad. It. It's normal. Uh, today's episode, so I'm, we're coming with a little bit of a different approach. Uh, part of what our commitment is to the listeners is to bring value in any way we can to the trucking community, truck drivers, owners, fleet managers. Today, I've got a good friend of mine and actually a client that works with me, um, John. John owns Origin Transport, so give it up for special guest John. What up, John? How are you? Good, man. How are you guys? Uh, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. I hope uh, you, you gave me a little bit of uh, responsibility there saying value, so I hope I can bring some value here. But uh, <laughs> No, I, I greatly appreciate it. Ryan, I had no idea you were in Canada, man, so it's nice to make this an international podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Spokane originally, awesome, Canada awesome. for now. But it's been a while <laughs> since you were here. Ryan jumped around, man. He was in uh, Seattle and uh, Tacoma and Bellingham and I don't know, wherever else your travels led you. Basically that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, oh, man, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to have you here. And it kind of adds a unique perspective eventually because I'm starting to see things about the trucking industry up here. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we might we, we might make some uh, some new contacts up here too, just yeah, to add a little extra we, value. We share the board. No, we appreciate you cool, being here, man. John. And you know, it's funny, John. Usually, what we ask a lot of the guests because most of the people are. Um, e either in a service industry or some sort of product role or, you know, ELD vendor or association role, things like that. Um, but you actually have drove truck and hard truck driver. So what is your CB handle? Well, man, it's a bit embarrassing. Uh, so I guess, you know, I've been, I've had my CDL now for 15 years, uh, uh, just to age myself right when I turned 21, got my CDL and, uh, but I did, a, you know, most of my majority was delivery. So, yep. uh, local stuff. And that wasn't, you know, CB handles weren't really a big thing. And so, you know, we started origin transport and over the road. So, I mean, the embarrassing part is actually, I've never got myself a CB <laughs> hand handle, but if I did have one, it would be uncle BJ. And I know that can go multiple ways. It depends on where your mind's at, but, uh, Travis, my partner, his, uh, kids, his grandkids gave me that name because, you know, uncle big John, you know, awesome. so, uh, and uh, so, anyways, I'd, I'd probably go Uncle BJ. I, I, that wouldn't work great in the trucking industry, but you know, hey, it's, it is what it is. I'll take it. I think it. it would fly somewhere, though. And I think, so. <laughs> yeah, in the big John really aspect, well. sounds trucking to me. I mean, the, you know, that's there like you go. Old that's school. probably yeah, eighties trucking movie, Big John. I think that that fits. That's probably. I probably should take that advice, Cam. Maybe I just go Big John. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I bet you that's taken, but no, nah, I, I think you yeah. run with it, and then you get some context and layer it in there. So, you know what's cool yeah. about John? I I guess I probably actually met you traditional route through like actual sales and calling on you, if I recall. Um, but mm -hmm. after we connected and chatted, and John like listened to me and endured whatever bullshit I spewed to him, uh, I started connecting with him and really like admiring kind of his approach to the trucking industry, his business, how he ran and operated and just what his vision was and his goals were. So that's kind of something that we try to really look into with clients that we're working with is, Hey, what are your plans for the future? What do you want to do? And whether or not John is making it up or not, he's really not because he's actually executing on his plans <laughs> and, and his vision and stuff like that. Um, I think there's a ton of value to be had there that a lot of new trucking company owners or um, owner operators that want to start their own or go out on their own, they don't put a lot of thought into the business planning aspect and intention on growth and what's going to happen in the future. And, and when John and I chatted, I was just super impressed by that and blown away, John. So kudos to you on that. I, I really appreciate that. I mean, a lot of that credit goes to my, you know, my partner, Travis, really, we, we have that unique relationship that, you know, he's more of a, analytical type guy but you know i kind of take that and run with it and you know but i admire people like you cam i mean you you actually reached me by traditional cold calling you know which is uh a lot of people think that's dead but you know i mean i i admired your you, you know your approach to it and i can see i can see real when it's there and i appreciate your uh, drive and ambition that brought a lot of value to us so yeah absolutely um, and that, that's our yeah. focus too but so part of what i like to 
basically discover from somebody is what's the motivation. So when you made the step and kind of switched from your career, and actually if you want, you can give a little bit of background about what you've done and the steps and the roles and the management roles and oversight that you had. I think that's valuable um, because a lot of truckers, you know, navigate through logistics in some form or fashion, and there's so many avenues to get where you're at. So let's Let's look at your background real quick, but then let's talk about the motivations and why did you take the leap? Yeah, for sure. So uh, just to sum it down quickly, I mean, again, I, I've had my CDL for 15 years and basically got into trucking because that's what there was. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. Um, I was fortunate enough, you know, to get into a local position. So I was home, you know, constantly and had somewhat of a life, uh, you know, for trucking standards. And um, I did that for about seven years seven years, six to seven years. And then I had a chance actually to go overseas, uh, which was a unique opportunity to be a uh, project manager uh, for a nonprofit. So that kind of brought in my, you know, ability to learn some sort of, uh, you know, team building skills and management. So, uh, you know, I did that for about five years. We, uh, you know, we had a couple of different contracts in that time period. And then, you know, from, I was over in India and in, in the Philippines. And then from that point, my wife and I moved to uh, Las Vegas uh, where, you know, I consider my brother, but my partner, Travis, you know, he, uh, you know, he lived here and, and we just decided we've always been interested in business. And initially, you know, we decided, Hey, let's, you know, this is a way to generate cash flow. I've actually heard some of your other podcasts on here, you know, regarding the cash flow, uh, cause with trucking. And it is a great way to do it done properly. And our idea was just, Hey man, let's, let's get our wives. They, you know, got CDLs. Um, let's go team, build up some cash flow, invest it into real estate and go that route. And, you know, I mean, that was kind of the initial start until we decided, Hey, you know, we friends started asking like, well, you know, Hey, I drive truck. I'd like to come work with you guys. And it just continued developing until where we're at now, where we're actually just hitting, you know, you and I were discussing earlier hitting fleet status. So it's, uh, you know, not to completely throw it into like a one minute thing there, but you know, we, we initially didn't start with this vision in mind. It was kind of a growth process over time. Yep. I think that that's great. And I think it'll uh, give some context to folks that are maybe potentially in that position. So, um, and that's awesome for the motivation there. And I think a lot of folks can or should find value in that because, you know, myself included, I don't want a single revenue stream or a single bucket that I rely on. I would like to diversify a little bit, but each thing that you do or endeavor you do is like a means to get or springboard and do something else that's you can be passionate about and um, expand into. Now, did you go down the real estate path at all? Did you buy any rentals or get any investment properties or anything? Or did you halt and kind of just keep in the trucking lane? Not really, man. I mean, that was the goal. You know, we were going to do it for five years um, again and just run the two trucks and invest in real estate. And instead of that, we took all that money and actually invested it into origin. We, We saw you know, it's kind of like anything like you with the insurance business, you get into it and you're like, you see little holes. And I think that's what's you know awesome about this particular generation of people in the trucking is that we have technology and whatnot that we can see that, hey, you know, there's probably some improvement here and let's see what we can do. Our our big thing is, you know, we, we had so much experience. You know, Travis came from 25 years of driving and warehouse management and whatnot. And we started to see like things, you know, that could be improved in this industry. And so instead of taking that investment into real estate, we postponed that and put it into it. buying more trucks and, and hiring and, you know, trying to build up the brand origin and kind of put that off, you know, down the road a little bit. But man, it's, it's been, it's been a lot of fun and it's, uh, it's humbling. I mean, that's the best, that's the best word I can use for it. It's humbling. You know, you, you think you know, uh, what you're doing until you realize you don't. So it's been, it's, it's been, a, it's been a great, a yeah. great, a great and, learning experience. And I think anyone, you know, hopefully people take the time to educate themselves. And if they're listening to something like this, you know, they actually care and are trying to expand and further their knowledge base about something that's important. So I think that's a big key component. Another thing I admired, you know, about you when we chatted early on, you didn't necessarily have all the right people hired and I, and I'm, I'm probably not even, this might not come off right, but I guess what you did do is you partnered with awesome companies that like, for example, one handled the driver hiring, right? And the onboarding packets and things like that. And so you found either vendors or relationships or carriers that were like experts in their area and you work with them. Um, you want to elaborate a little bit on that? Cause I think a lot of folks try to wear all the hats and 
you it would be tough to do everything i mean it really would you you're, you only have so much time plus if you want to dive into you know what's the value of your time how much is it worth for me to spend doing something you you start to unpack like oh shit man i should either hire this or find someone to do this real quick especially if you're ambitious so yeah it's hard right. to do something well when you're doing a lot <laughs> Yeah, no, exactly. I, I mean, I think, you know, it's, it's, I mean, you, you guys, you guys know this. I mean, and, and, and I see Cam, you're building up awesome things in the insurance industry. Um, you know, probably the, the biggest thing that I've learned and that we've all learned in this is just the, how little, like how little money is worth and how much time is worth, yeah. you know, and that's a very hard thing to cross over from when you're, be, you know, when you're actually learning to uh, invest and grow a business is that, you know, you come from a, a, a you know, a time when you're actually working for money. And so at that point, you're saving money, you know, paying for your house, which is very, you know, it's, you know, uh, commendable. And, you know, I respect that completely. But when you go into a business, you're saying, I only have 24 hours a day. I've got to make the most of it because now I'm competing. And now I'm also, I have others relying on us. So, um, you, you know, the biggest thing for us is we, you know, we really, really tried to embrace failure. That was our biggest thing is like, yeah. it's okay to fail. And the quicker we, we're going to fail on something. I mean, it's, you know, when I talk to you about insurance, I'm going to make an ass out of myself because I don't know, you know, I mean, I need to take that time that you spend with me on the phone and listen to you and then take what, what I can from it and learn from it. I might not do everything, you know, and you might have to tell me five times yes. and, you know, on something, but if I can use your expertise, it, 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 it's going to better me and it's going to multiply us into a, a better position. So we did that with, uh, you know, we, we were lucky enough and fortunate enough to find people uh, to help, you know, with uh, registration. I mean, that was a big thing for us, you know, becoming, you know, just getting our authority. You know, when you first start, it's amazing looking back that things just overwhelm you, the smallest things, because you don't know, you, you know, coming from the operator, you know, the operator side of it, to the, you know, the, the owning side of it. I mean, you, you hear things, you know, I mean, I was freaked out about like IFTA when we first started this, you know, yeah. uh, almost four years ago, but now looking back, it's kind of funny, but you know, that's how we look at it today. You know, I'm freaked out about certain things we're diving into. And I just realized like, Hey, you know, it, you know, just, uh, make the most of your time, learn as much as you can and just get through it, you know, push. And so we, we really, really try to utilize, uh, you know, friendships and, and close relationships with as many people as we can. And, and, um, and we try to get back to them too. We don't just try to take uh, if we can. Uh, yeah. I know, I know sometimes it does just seem like a take relationship, but, uh, you know, we, we definitely try to add some value there for other people as well. Well, most successful people too, or anyone that genuinely cares and that you'd consider a friend or a good true relationship, they want to help you succeed. Right. I mean, if you ask, they'll give and, you know, they want to help you in any way they can, whether it's referrals. And for me, you know, um, if I've got clients or, or folks that I know that are looking for good drivers or let's say equipment, because equipment's, uh, it, it's, it's hard to come by right now, even in the new market, it's crazy. You're just waiting, you know, forever. Um, you know, I try to make those connections and be a connector and a resource in any way I can. So, um, yeah, you're absolutely right. So, what are some of the, it's funny, you mentioned failing and anyone that's successful um, knows you're going to fail and, and it's not even a big deal. You look at that as an opportunity to learn, perfect, change, like correct, you know, moving forward or fail forward is like a common phrase a lot of folks will use. What are some of the biggest failures you had that let's say maybe are the most impactful to where you are now? Oh man. Jeez, I don't think we have the time to go over them, to be honest. Um, one or two that are, that are like stand out in your mind that was like, oh, shit, I did not realize that was going to happen. Well, luckily, we've been fortunate not to have any disasters. So I guess I could say that firsthand. I mean, I think that's a blessing, right? I mean, you know, maybe maybe close to, but, uh, I, you know, starting out, I mean, one that's that uh, rings a bell is that, uh, you know, when we first started out, there was um, – times that you know so on the on the new trucks not to completely bore you here but on the new trucks you know they they change the 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 steer axle to a, a heavier weight you know to do with multiple things and we didn't realize like the difference in ply tires and this is going to give me a lot of credentials in the you know for the in the trucking world but we didn't really realize it and uh you know travis you know back then we were we were trying to be as lean as mean and possible you know we sold everything so we we're living in our trucks just doing everything we can to save money and we bought brand new steer tires you know which cost like 1200 bucks right and so you know, we, uh, Travis went through a weight scale and the guy came out and said, Hey, these are the wrong ply for this weight, you know, this axle. Right. 
So he was cool. The DOT officer's cool and, and, you know, lets him go and just says, hey, get it fixed. So Travis and I talk and we're like, yeah, we'll get it fixed when we get back here. You know, it wasn't, you know, we're like, we'll be okay. We'll get it back here. And he goes back. He somehow happens to go back through that port again about a week later, same steer tires on there and gets us nailed with an out of service, which, I mean, that's, you know, you know, we dealt with that. It took two years to fall off, you know, until recently. And, uh, you know, at the time we were thinking like, you know, Hey, we'll get it fixed later. And, uh, you know, we just put it off and, you know, it ended up costing us actually more, way more than just replacing the steer tires, you know, because it's, it's tough to, it's those out of services don't look great on a report or, you know, great on our safe or just great on us as a company overall, you know? Um, so, I mean, that's a kind of a minor failure, but it's something that we learned quickly. Like when things, especially like that, you know, you just got to take, you just got to take care of them as part of the game and you just gotta, you just gotta handle it and move on. Um, you know, uh, that on top of, you know, many other things as far as, you know, what software we use and, uh, you know, ELD systems we use. I mean, you, you get into things it for, we well, get into things with the mind of two trucks and then now you're, you know, 11 trucks and just things change, you know, and. Um, I don't know if you consider all of them failures necessarily, but you're definitely, it's, it's a learning curve, you know? Yeah. And, um, so luckily right. we haven't had any major, major, uh, ones that are like catastrophic. Cause unfortunately with the trucking industry, it in are, at our size, one of those kind of makes, you know, see you later type well, of, you, you avoided but, major, major disaster, potentially with the steer tires, if they weren't the right pie or what right ply blew out and, you know, you're traveling yep. down the freeway. I mean, that could spell major disaster. That's obviously the ultimate failure is something like that, hurting mm-hmm. a driver uh, or the public, right? And you're not going to get your load right. where it needs to go. Um, but, you know, you pointed out something amazing there is, like, unlike your personal life, or if you're like me, it's like you got a project sitting six months and your wife reminds you every six months to do it. You can't do that in your own business, especially when you're dealing with something of this magnitude. You have to take action immediately the second you find out about something um, right. Uh, same with your drivers too, right? Like a lot of these companies need to understand the importance of a pre-trip post-trip as like trivial as a lot of that is, or it's like, oh yeah, you know, they just kind of skate through it. Well, air leaks and the brakes or, I mean, anything like that, that'll get your ass shut down. Not to mention it, mm. it could lead to failure, which, you know, hurts and impacts very negatively. And the out of service, it's funny you mentioned, you and I actually talked about that. Um, in detail about what happened and it's like, Hey, we did this and had all intentions and Hey, we were going to go change these tires out. We happened to go right back through the same, same port and got dinged for it. And so that was an easy explanation for me and it made sense and it actually was correct and never happened again. So to me, it's like, okay, these guys are learning and they're taking the corrective actions and measures necessary. So I think a lot of folks can learn from that. It's just take action on things that come to your attention and be proactive too. Right. So on your vehicles, um, I mean, you, you buy a lot of brand new vehicles, right? You turn your fleet through pretty thoroughly, um, frequently. What's your plan on that? Yeah, we're, we're fortunate. So the first vehicle we bought was brand new and the last vehicle we bought was brand new. We've only purchased uh, two trailers that were used and we regretted it. So, and we ended up selling those units. Um, we, we, you know, we've been in the, we've been in the driver's seat. And in fact, we still drive, you know, when we need to, and we realize the pride that's taken in that brand, you know, brand new equipment. Plus we realize the cost of downtime, you know, if a trailer's in the shop, it's way more expensive. Um, you know, we, you, you know, we're not believers in working on things ourselves. Uh, you know, we're believers on, you know, getting drivers and things that they have pride in, they take pride in and, uh, you know, can keep clean. Plus image is big, you know, for us, we want to, we want to, you know, when people see an origin truck, we want people to say origin takes pride in what they do and they care about what they do. So, you know, as you know, have you seen from the brand new equipment, we definitely put a large investment in everything we use there. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing, one thing that we've, you know, the, the last, you know, quarter three, quarter four of this last year on top of getting this new equipment in and, and then moving on until next year and, and things you and I've talked about is process and procedure. You know, one thing we're really, really trying to work on is killing, you know, redundant tasks, you know, so we're trying to automate any sort of redundant tasks and, and reduce that workforce part. Um, so we, we've been fortunate. I mean, they, we have awesome technology companies coming out, you know, in trucking right now, which is exciting. You know, I mean, Sam Sarah is a great one. Uh, you know, they're definitely is that who taking you, charge of. Is that who you use for your uh, ELD and everything? It is. Yeah, we recently just switched to them. Okay. Actually, the second half of last year, and 
it's been a it's been a good partnership because you know they they understand and they're willing to make that change you know that's that's what's unique about working with programmers and then operators in like this business is trying to explain like hey you know it'd be nice to see this and nice to you know use this and you know companies like sam sarah take that and run with it and for companies like ourselves origin you know it's it's beneficial because we use that actually to you know we go through in the beginning with like our new trucks and we put in the maintenance schedule and everything that needs to be done and then it automatically pops up and it'll just you know it'll just take that truck out of service and put it in the shop during that time when it's back for its last dispatch yeah. and get it you know get it taken care of um you, you know that data is just really valuable to us um, as we continue to grow so uh you, you know I wouldn't have it any other way. I mean, I know my, my big picture wants to say, like, hey, Cam, we're going to be at 55 trucks <laughs> next week. But, I mean, you, you know, having this opportunity to grow in the stages that we have has been really, you know, yeah. beneficial in, in letting us, uh, you know, take things like this and, and plan for safety and maintenance and, yeah. and what we need to do. And a lot of that's guidance, too. I mean, you and I chatted in depth about, you know, smart growth, too, right? I mean, you start getting crazy, and it's like, you know, everyone wants to grow. Everyone wants to have a 1,000 trucks or whatever, but next thing you know, you got a bunch of issues with staff or um, owner-op drivers and people that are going rogue that really don't give a shit about your name, brand, or image, and they walk away, and they leave you suffering with the DOT number. Um, and that's just kind of a minor piece of it anyway. So, hey, real quick, too, because I know a lot of folks probably be dying to know how are you getting equipment? <laughs> Do you have a contact or something? Because a lot of folks, no everyone that talks to me is like, man, I can't get a truck. I can't get a trailer. I don't know where to go. Um, or they're just the used market. And a lot of folks go to the used market, I think, out of uh, necessity. I'm not sure. But that's, I think that's higher market. than the new market almost. So, Yeah, I mean, yeah, don't be jealous. I mean, I can't buy a new truck if I want to either right now. I mean, I was... I, <laughs> Uh, again, you know, our, our salesman, I mean, you, you've met him, you know, uh, Rick over at Camworth. He's, you know, he's been a huge asset to us and yeah, a good friend during Rick, this time. And Rick's a baller. Yeah, I know. You know, he really is. He's a, he's definitely, I, I call him a killer. He doesn't really understand that much. Just be an old term, but I definitely, he's, he's one of the, he's one of the few for sure. But yeah, he's, he's helped us, uh, you know, uh, Put, he's put he's pushed me which sounds a little bit crazy but he you know saying like let's plan we got to plan early get these trucks in early and luckily i mean we got our order in for these last round of trucks in just in time before all this craziness happened and uh but it happened with trucks trailers it happened with everything i mean we took it as uh you know we took it as for us there was actually some value there because you know things don't always go as planned so you know when you you know with drivers and with trailers and with trucks and it ended up working out really good for us. I feel fortunate, but yeah, I mean, you, you know, I've been trying to put in an order for next year for trailers and I'm still, still struggling there. I mean, we got our order in for trucks, but you know, it's just, uh, I mean, I don't really have any great advice except just, uh, really, if you're buying used, especially like really, really dig into it. Cause right now a used truck is going to cost as much as a brand new one. Yeah. Um, and yeah. just, uh, really, you know, just really, really look at the market and realize that the markets go up and markets come down and make sure that you're, you're planning realistically about it. Because if you get yourself in something that breaks down and you're paying a new truck payment on it, it's, it's not going to be a good time. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's very good advice. <laughs> no, I think it's great advice. Yeah. And I think too is about relationships too, man. I mean, that's a, that should be a big component yep. of that is, always keep a positive relationship and keep your ear to the street, if you will, and find people that are awesome to work with. That's, I think that's sound mm -hmm. advice there. It's funny. Uh, another podcast we just recently finished talks a little bit about that. He's um, it's more money talks. And actually I think the episode will be money talks. Um, he's a, I guess a certified financial planner is probably is the correct title for that. But what is cool about that is, is like right now, John, you just hit the nail on the head. The market is hot. People are making a lot of money. People are rolling in it. You know, they're not, some are people like you are thinking about, man, what's going to happen if not, if when, you know, how do I plan for this? What money do I need to do here? What's my goals going in? And this episode will come out beginning of 2022. My guess is you've already thought through 2022 and you're looking at your quarters and your growth and your goals. Um, you know, folks don't plan for that a lot. Don't, or they're not moving money and things that can become an asset and like be ready for tomorrow. And so when you're looking at strategy planning and goals, 
what did you do for 2022 and what are you doing to plan for these inevitable things that could happen for downtime or um, catastrophe or a mechanical failure? Right. I mean, so we, we kind of look at, uh, you know, our, our bait, we look at like a base uh, price per mile and where we want to be as we, we first look at where do we want to be as a company. So our, our number one, our number one goal without a doubt is drivers. I mean, that's going to be any company you talk to. It's going to be drivers. I mean, it, it, it's true um, how people handle it's different, but it is true. I mean, that your driver, your driver is your largest asset. The truck doesn't move without them. I mean, it's just what it is. So focusing on, you know, our, our number, our biggest thing in, in origin has been, how do we obtain awesome talent and make them a true part of the team and give them a life, you know, and, 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 you know, uh, offer them, you know, what they need to have a, a great family life and, uh, financial life too, and, 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 um, security. So we kind of look at that and where we would like to be in 2022. Um, we look towards the end of 2022 and where we, you know, where we'd like to be and then try to price that in, you know, per mile and, and growth. Uh, that's a little bit different than operating because, you know, our operating or, you know, cost of goods that we, you know, quote unquote cost of goods, you know, to actually get the truck down the road is a little bit, we have that cost. And then we also have, Hey, this is our growth cost and trying to make it look pretty enough to, uh, you, you know, grow into those numbers. Um, so I, I would say like the, the biggest, uh, if you're in a position like origin, like, or if a driver out there is in a position like origin with, you know, 10 trucks, I mean, we don't, it's tempting to look at the spot market right now. I mean, it really is. It's the spot market's insane. Um, you know, I haven't been this in a long time, but there's a lot of money out there in the spot market, but we, our team does, we know we, we use the spot market, you know, to move trucks from, you know, where we need to move trucks, but this is the best time that possibly ever will be to go in and for a, a company of our size to go in and build a real relationship with customers yeah. uh, and get direct shippers. In, in in normal in normal time 2018 2019 forget it origin transport is not going to talk to a uh, respectable shipper unless you have an in uh, but right now that's not the case right now they can't they have no capacity they can't ship so if you take this opportunity and go into a shipper and offer them value and service even when the even when the times get bad as long as you've created that good relationship like we spoke about you're going to be set and that's going to be your building block. So origins taken, you know, this opportunity and sure we could go to the spot market and make more money, but we're, we're not interested because we, we believe that whether it be the end of 22 or 23, that will fall. It has to, the market will correct itself. Um, probably not to levels that were, they were at, but you know, it will correct itself. So we're just taking this opportunity to use that growth strategy and, and say, you know, Hey, let's focus on these customers. Let's build these lanes out let's become more of a niche because in trucking, man, you can get lost. You can try to do everything and everything and anything under the sun, just you're chasing money. And I'm telling you, you get lost. At least we will, you know, we will get lost. So we're really trying to narrow down and focus on lanes and customers and that's it. And drivers. And yeah, you're not alone on that too. And it's just like you shipping a load from point A to point B, you know where you're going. So you're not like just mm -hmm. traveling down random ass roads thinking, Oh, I'm going to make more money going this way or this way. Yeah, yeah, but right. Well, I think that's a really good point. Oh, that's a really good point to bring up is that people aren't picking a focus, which, and maybe short term, they're making some good money in some places, and that's why they're doing that. But long term, they're not, nobody recognizes them as to, you know, as to be specialized in one sort of thing or a few or a few certain areas. And I think that's a huge, huge thing that people miss, obviously, in life in general, but also in the trucking industry, I'm sure just to pick a lane and stick to it. Once you have a specialty and you have a niche and you have like a client base or relationships with people in the industry, I mean, it's probably going to take you a lot farther than just picking up every low that'll take you any direction just for the pay. Yeah. Right. Well, and listening to, to some of these, bit? there's a couple of people I follow in some of these groups that I'm in, um, different trucking groups. Um, and a lot of them right now preach the spot, spot market. You know, it's like, Hey, this, you can make more money than ever and doing this and doing that and if you're an owner operator you know shed that and go start hitting spot loads and you're going to make you know x percent more um which plays into john's strategy here which i love you found a little bit of a blue ocean strategy within an already saturated market and so it's like okay let's look at the landscape look at what these people are doing and go do the opposite and find the value in creating these relationships why they're all I don't want to say being greedy because everyone's running their business and they need to make money and maximize the opportunities in hand but long term, this is a strategy. I love that, man. That's uh, that's badass. That's awesome. 
Yeah, and it probably, just to clear, I mean, just to kind of uh, touch on that again, it, it probably depends on what you're trying to do. I mean, we're trying to actually build something uh, bigger, you know, and, and we're trying to build a, a fleet. And, and so we have a lot of other things to, you know, consider as far as, you know, security, like I said, of our drivers and the, you know, the team that supports those drivers. And, you know, whereas if you're an owner operator and you have a, a paid off truck, say, and, and you're out there, I mean, you know, in that case, I would say just go take advantage of the market, you know, and yeah you know, run, run to your heart's, you know, desire and, you know, take the, you know, take the time off. The only advice I'd give it to an owner operator is don't take vacations right now, go out and make that money. And then when the market slows down, go take vacation. But, you know, right. uh, yeah, it just depends on what you're looking for. I mean, you know, and, uh, but yeah. Have I a mean, plan. That's what it sounds like. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, there I was you go. wondering, can you, can you talk a little bit about, like, obviously you, you initially had plans to really use trucking to kind of just gain revenue to do other things. It sounds like what was really your motivation to keep you in it and to keep you and your partner in it, I suppose, and to grow because now it seems like you have a larger passion for the industry and you found something that I don't know if a lot of people are actually paying attention to, but you're, you're focusing on growth holistically and you know, it sounds like you didn't start with that plan. So where, where did that come from? Like what changed your mind and you know, what, what do you have invested now? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question, question, Ryan. It's, you know, it's kind of like the snowball down the hill, you know, you, you start with, you know, our current, you know, our plan that was, and then, you know, we, uh, we brought on one of, uh, you know, Travis's really good friends and came out and helped us. And, and we made some good relationships with clients and we just, we saw that hole and that, you know, we, we started to, we started to see things that could be improved in on a pond in the trucking industry and just logistics as a whole. And it, it, it excited us. The challenge of building, uh, building something was right up where, you know, right up at Travis and myself's alley. You know, that's why we were, we were looking at real estate and, and different ventures. And then the relationships that we built in this, you know, industry, uh, you know, Cam, Rick, you know, multiple people throughout the industry at, it excited us because, you know, admittedly coming into this, you know, you look at trucking as an old man's game, you know, with all respect given, but you know, it, it, it is still there and it's still needed. You know, we're really excited about the future with, you know, automated trucking and, um, you know, just different, different avenues down there. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a technology nerd myself. So I see that stuff and it excites me and, um, you know, and, and customer service has always been a huge thing. I know it's weird, but we just, we love to, where we see that value of like, Hey, that, you know, people are excited, you know, uh, customers are excited when we communicate with them, when we just give them a simple email and say, Hey, you know, your load has been delivered safely. Here's some pictures of your load, whatever. And people are just blown away. And we're like, well, that just seems too simple. You know, it's like, right. um, we, and then we just, and then the, you know, and then once we started hiring team drivers, you know, you, you guys know that when you start hiring people, you have the weight of their, their family and their success on your shoulders as well. So it's not just all of a sudden about John or about Travis and, it becomes about their families and what their goals are and their aspirations. And so, um, and you see people, you know, start to buy their first house and you're like, wow, I mean, we created something that actually supports that. And, um, I don't know if that completely answers your questions or if I'm going around in a circle, but that that's kind of where our inspiration and motivation it comes from. It's like, we're actually bettering, um, we're not necessarily doing it, but our team is bettering the lives of the people that we're involved with. And that's exciting for us. And we see that uh, it only can get better from here. And, and you start to see that, like, uh, although we don't have a clue what the hell we're doing most of the time, you know, I mean, that's just it's just honesty. You know, it's the whole, uh, you know, imposter syndrome, you'd say. But yeah. our, our team, our team is really like uh, really came together and just uh, developed something that changes people's lives. And, you know, and is uh, small as trucking seems sometimes or logistics as a whole it is a major thing that, you know, the whole the whole country can see right now is how important logistics as a whole is so it's it's exciting to just be a part of that of course yeah and it seems like uh well, i mean you guys are raising the bar right yeah. especially for smaller owner operators or growing fleets like as companies are growing i think that you know trucking has an has a reputation where it's not necessarily like public facing but you're doing things for your image in public as far as like keeping control of your trucks you're doing things as you know internally as taking care of your customers and then you're raising the bar on customer service. I mean, I'm sure you're doing a lot more than that, but just those three things, focusing on those three things have known statistically to make a huge impact in a business. And I mean, well, you're obviously raising the bar for other people to be competitors and, you know, maybe, maybe right now it might not feel as impactful, but I think long term it's going to be really impactful. So 
It's great, man. Keep going. Hey, John, quick question on that. And I know that that contributes to obviously your overall culture uh, with your drivers and stuff like that. What are you doing in today's environment, especially with, you know, truck drivers are in and out on the road. And like you said, when you started, you lived in your truck. How are you cultivating your culture and um, managing to make your employees just feel part of something that you're building? Like, what, what are some things that you're doing? Because I know that's a big problem for a lot of owners. They just don't know how to take care of their people. I mean, they really don't. So let's dive into that a little bit because you have very minimal turnover. I don't get calls. Hey, remove this driver, add this driver, remove this driver, um, like I do with some of my accounts, and uh, they just haven't figured it out. So let's dive and share some secrets there. Yeah, I know for sure, Cam. I, you know, uh, quickly, you had a podcast rec- or a while back with that uh, with Grant uh, Botma yeah. on company culture. Yeah. I actually listened to that and I really, really enjoyed that. Awesome. You know, uh, that's uh, I think that man, I think that's the most important part. Honestly, I think everything else can be figured out. You can, you know, you can get, uh, you know, consulting and whatnot to figure out, you know, how to do it. You know, correct your accounting and your, you know, your your uh, maintenance and your compliance. I mean, that stuff's all there. But if you don't have like a culture that of a team that understand when shit goes bad, like you guys are going to come together as a team and pick it up and it's going to be okay. Um, so for drivers, it's the same thing. We don't, uh, and part of this might be because Travis and myself are drivers. You know, we, we do have a CDL and we do understand the pain of being on the road and being away from your family. And we take it very, very seriously as far as, you know, treating them as actually like almost a part of management per se of like, you know, taking, you know, and valuing their time and letting them make decisions on their own, not trying to mic- not micromanage them. You know, I mean, uh, one big thing with us is, uh, you know, we, we want to minimize the work that's done on the road and let them focus on being safe and driving. So, you know, check calls and stuff. We try to eliminate all of that. Um, you know, the biggest thing with drivers as well is we, we did a little bit different strategy with the drivers and hiring and, um, we're still working on it. It's a work in progress and we've been called crazy for it, but it seems to be working is that we have a base salary of $80,000 with our drivers. That's the lowest amount any driver will ever make with us. And then we're, we're instilling, uh, incentives on top of that. Hopefully the first quarter of this year, we'll have some of that, in, you know, put in place, meaning, you know, if they perform good on like fuel numbers and idle and stuff like that, which in turn makes money for the company, we pass that on to them and let them make more money. And, we have a goal for our drivers that, you know, we would like all of our top performing drivers that wear that origin hat and, and, uh, fly our, you know, fly the flag as a team that we want them to make six figures a year. And we really believe it can be done. We really believe that, that, that eliminating that uh, turnover rate and keeping our retention, you know, in, in a per- perfect order, uh, can pay for that. And so, you know, we offer things that even at our, you know, we're, again, we're 11 trucks, so we're still small. We're, you know, we're, uh, we're one of the little guys, but, we pay 100% health insurance. We have 401k set up for drivers. We, you know, make sure our drivers are home every single week. Um, you know, we, uh, I haven't told anybody about this, but I mean, with, uh, you know, Travis and I right now are trying to work on a plan to make sure that all of our drivers are home on all holidays. And then we'll, you know, we'll cover those, you know, using different means. Um, and that doesn't go against their vacation time. You know, things like that are big, you know, they have families and they want to be home with their kids and, you know, in, in my opinion, it's not a lot to ask. Um, is it pretty, is it somewhat real, unrealistic in the trucking industry? Sure, but you know, I like to be unrealistic, and you know, I, I like to challenge. You know, we like to challenge ourselves and say, well, just because people say it can't be done, you know, we'll make it happen. And uh, that's that's why this year, and after talking to you, Cam, it actually started. Was like we said, we're not going east anymore. We're staying in eleven western states. Yeah. And we've reduced it more than that. I mean, we basically go Idaho, Montana, you know, uh, Utah, Nevada, in Southern California. Yeah. Um, and then we, we try to, you know, break it down. So getting people home, um, we really, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to live by the old terms of, you know, uh, you, you know, man up and just go on the road and run. Cause we're trying to be realistic and, and say that like, Hey, we can have high quality drivers that have millions of miles of experience. I mean, two of the guys we just hired last week, or multi-million milers that accident free. And it's just like, I feel like that's, that's a trophy for us. You know what I mean? It's like hundred percent trophy. And I love the yeah. shout out to Grant, by the way, cause Grant uh, is a good friend of mine, but um, above that though, he's an amazing entrepreneur and business person and, and like leader and dad and all that good stuff. And his course, 
isn't just for like business professionals. I, I really think anybody could take that course and learn a tremendous amount of value on how to create mm -hmm. company culture, nurture your employee relationships. Like you said earlier, they are your biggest asset, right? So like, mm -hmm. why not learn and invest in yourself to take better care of those people and keep them? Because what is the cost of driver turnover or employee turnover, man? It's crazy. No, it's... And right now the market is bananas. So you taking care of them, empowering them, bringing benefits, um, talking about pay openly, I think is great because, you know, a lot of drivers without transparency kind of feel like they're getting bent over, really. I mean, I, that's kind of what you hear quite a bit, which promotes and leads to people going out on their own, which I think is great because America's great. The trucking industry is great. There's so much opportunity to do what you want to do. But I also think there's a spot for people to be employees and not owners. Not everybody's cut out to be an owner. <laughs> they really aren't. Right. Um, and they don't. I don't think they understand it uh, at a certain level unless they have done the research and, and education and stuff like that so um yeah, yeah that's awesome and now do you have any when you're recruiting I, I guess correct me if i'm wrong a lot of that's word of mouth from you and i chatting i believe right yeah you know it, it definitely started with word of mouth and we love word of mouth because uh, you know it's like that it, it gives that you know us that assurance and it gives them that insurance it's kind of like that for you, you the ice is broken before you guys even meet which is yeah. really nice uh, there's no assuming and things and so most of it's been word of mouth um a lot of the you know, we're, we're, we are transitioning. So we started with owner operators, like, you know, that's pretty, that's pretty standard. You know, when you're looking at cash flow, we started with owner operators and now we're converting into, uh, company drivers. And, and so we've had, uh, you know, we just recently hired a word of mouth, uh, driver from a company guy. And, uh, but actually we've had a couple hires over Facebook. Um, you know, uh, I'm not a, I'm not personally a Facebook user, but I mean, it does work. It is, you know, it's definitely a, a powerhouse. And then, um, we've also, we, we put a new location up in Idaho Falls and it's worked out really good for us. It's right on one of the main highways there and, you know, people get curious and start making phone calls. And so that's been great. Awesome. Um, seeing, so, seeing that so, yeah. brand, man, driving through brand new trucks, looking good. I think that's no, yeah, it's about, it. it's about that. Yeah. Yep. It's about that. Yeah. I don't know. Have you seen our new, have you seen our new, uh, trailers and trucks? <laughs> no, I, well, after we're done, oh, shoot, yeah. shoot over a picture of that. And I'll feature yeah. that on our groups and like to our following and stuff. I think that's part of what this does is it gets the word out. So yeah, I'm, I'm game to share it. So awesome, man. Yeah. That's awesome, awesome dude. That is amazing. Now for something else, I think to touch on and you and I, it's funny before the podcast started recording, we're briefly chatting about it your safety scores have actually improved um, dramatically and they weren't bad to begin with. So I don't, I don't want to paint it like that. Um, <laughs> but obviously you have to train and you have to teach the drivers and like breed this culture of safety. What are you doing to cultivate that? And actually before, I, just to make a note that we don't forget um, you're switching from owner ops to more of a driver model an employee model. I think that has a lot of merit and there's a lot of positives. There's positives in bulk, but I think there's more positives in the employee because you get a little bit more control, which isn't a bad thing. It, it's just more control over how you grow in your image and protect your safety, which I think is mm -hmm. goes hand in hand here. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, first of all, I mean, our owner operators are, you know, awesome guys, you know, I yeah. wouldn't, I wouldn't have any other way. Like I, they were all word of mouth. You know, we've actually known some of those guys, I mean, for up to, you know, 25, 30 years, you know, they came on. Um, so they're, they're almost more partners for us. So, but with, yeah, with the company drivers, it was definitely um, a, we had customers that were shooting. And the, the biggest thing that um, I'm, I'm sure you're like this as well. The biggest, the biggest thing that just, uh, it, it uh, that I hate doing and it just, it, it irks me. It squeezes my heart is when I got to tell a customer, no, sorry, we don't have a truck there. Sorry, we don't have a truck there. Sorry, we don't. Cause in my mind, I'm just like, Oh, I'm just turning down, um, future relationships with these guys. So, uh, with owner operators, the awesome thing is, you know, we don't, you know, we didn't, we don't force dispatch, you know, it's, it's their truck, their business. Um, we try to just support them on the back end. However, um, especially in times like this, when you're getting five and six bucks a mile on the spot market, and then a, a, one of our customers is, you know, half of that or a little bit more, you know, I don't blame them. You know, I mean, if they're an owner operator, like, why would you do that except just for maybe a quick favor? Yeah. But so, but with company guys, we can, we can look at it as a whole, you know, you can, you can play it like battleship and you can look at it a whole and say, this is what we got to accomplish. These are the moves we're going to make. You know, we might lose a little bit here, but we'll make a little bit here and, and get this driver home here. And we can, we can strategize and make it work a little bit better. It's an easier puzzle to play. And as far as the safety culture goes, I mean, 
uh, man, that's just a work in that's just a work in progress with us. We actually hired a, a girl named Nikki to help us out of our Idol Falls office, and she's she's a rock star. She's been really like putting in the hours and the grind to develop. Uh, you know, we're we're trying to use courses, like, you know, uh, programs like train uh, trainial and uh, trainual and uh, different things to get drivers, you know, information or resources to you know, they're interactive, you know, I mean, some of those old programs, I don't know if you guys have seen those old, like, you know, <laughs> yeah. ni- 1999, you know, o- like the, OSHA, the VHS. OSHA compliance yeah. videos when it's yeah. all these crazy uh, forklift uh, accidents it, and things like that. The, ba- the best is the Pike, the Pike Place uh, safety video. Oh, you ever seen that? Seattle? They're throwing the fish. <laughs> they're like throwing the fish <laughs> and talking about practicing workplace safety. Like, throwing a giant salmon and your back going out that's, funny. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome because a lot of a lot of people like fortunately i've been to pike's place so i, I totally know what you're talking about i mean if, if people yeah. haven't been there, they gotta go see it yeah. but uh yeah yeah i mean mm-hmm. that's but it's it's you know it's it, it's uh it, it we're learning there man we're learning there it's it's you know just it's you want to involve your drivers into that prog- program and you know when your drivers call you out on something and say you know hey this doesn't look right you gotta it's you gotta be humble about it and say you're totally right and try to develop that into the program and listen to them and actually take action and sometimes it's tough because you know you might have a trailer that doesn't look right and it's on a load and you're like oh how are we gonna fix this but you got to i mean you just have to make the time and do it and respect their pointed out to you and and i think that breeds in itself uh, a culture of you know, safety, because they say, hey, you know, they listen to me, and they respect that I know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And if you just ignore it and ignore it, and eventually they just, you know, you know, I think you just cave in and just do it as a job. And, you know, and it kind of it deteriorates from there. So well, and that gives gives them the understanding that you take pride in what you do, not only that you trust them, which is huge, but that you take pride in what you do. Because if you weren't, you know, paying attention to things that they say need attention, eventually either they're going to be quiet or they're just not going to care. Right. And exactly. So you being able to show them that you trust them and you take pride in your company also creates culture of pride for them. That's killer. Yeah, exactly. Ryan. Yeah, no, I agree. It's like just having that partnership instead of having, you know, four of us, you know, we got all of us are just involved yeah. and we look at it as just different roles, you know, I mean, you know, drivers teach me every day, you know, the drivers we have have so much more experience than I do driving a truck, you know, it's, and that's how I want it. That's exactly how I want it. I, if we aren't going to be a great company, if we have just a bunch of John Marino's driving a truck, I mean, that's just me being Frank, you know, it's, (laughs) I want people that are better and they call me out on stuff. That's how we get better as a team. So that's awesome. And use of technology, I think is huge, man. That's how you're bridging that gap, especially with the drivers on the road is um, the platforms that you're diving into and making them, more appealing and visually appealing, I'm guessing is what your reference to, to the old videos and systems were. But um, Mm -hmm. speaking of technology, I know you had mentioned um, the Sansara deal. Um, What are some other cool technologies that you've been following in the trucking industry that are either coming out that you have adopted or eyeing to adopt potentially moving forward? Mm. Oh man, there's so much. And if I, and you can shout them out too, I'm good. And actually, (laughs) if any of them are worth talking to, man, let's, uh, let's get them on the episode. I know you mentioned one, I think for for potentially like a factoring company or something, but I'm, I'm open to chat with anybody. So. Yeah, no, for sure, man. I, well, when my team hears this, they're going to laugh because, uh, (laughs) thankfully, thankfully I have the greatest partners in the entire world because, uh, I change stuff all the time. You know, I'm always looking at stuff and being like, well, we got to do this because it's this better. And they just look at me and shake their head and be like, man, we just learned this, you know? And, um, but yeah, there, there's, there's some awesome technology coming out. I mean, one, one that I want to get in touch with cam and actually I have it on my to-do list, which I'm failing at badly. I think this was probably four or five months ago when, when we talked about this, but is, uh, you know, relay payments, uh, Spencer over there, he's one of the co-founders, uh, they're, they're taking on, uh, um, EFS, you know, in, in fleet one and whatnot for, for lumper payments. And they're going deeper into fuel cards and whatnot. And, awesome. um, you know, they have a lot of work in progress there. That's, you know, they're, they're, you know, a, a small tech company, but they're, you know, they're making a lot of leaps and bounds. Uh, you know, right now for our, uh, management system, we use something that's called load stop. It was uh, originally developed in, 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 in India, I believe, which a lot of technology, major technologies developed over there. And they're, you know, they've been phenomenal with us. I mean, they're, they're taking over, you know, major players, you know, in the game and, 
and uh, bringing that real like UI feeling to trucking, which is big for me, man. I, I love how things look and you know how they appear. So that's been big for us. Uh, we use a lot of Apple products. Hopefully that's not insulting anybody. Cause I know there's definitely the Apple fanboys and Android guys, but, yep. um, you know, we, we've, we've, you know, all of our drivers, we give them, you know, their own device as a company phone. And, and the reason we've decided to do that is that we can program these devices to where they, you know, need to be. Plus they have the privacy of their own phones. They don't have to use their phone for when customers call them directly you know, and, and, you know, we feel that's really important. Um, we use, yeah, I mean, man, it's, uh, we, you know, I would say our biggest ones right now are probably like Sam Sarah and load stop. I mean, those are our big, you know, big use cases for uh, what we do. And are you, and, you had mentioned yeah. automation. Are you automating out of those products with, and do they integrate in with any of your other systems or text communications or email communications? Yeah, so we've we've been playing a lot with uh, you know programs like Zapier or you know these I've spent a- APIs. So much time with them. <laughs> yeah, it's you know it's awesome though. You get into it and it's just it's it's beneficial, but it can definitely be a time kill because you know you, you know I mean the if you mess with hole. it, you, you know, it is a giant rabbit. It's the it's the it's the um, today's version of YouTube for sure. I mean it's it's like you get st- sucked in that hole and you're like, oh, I can do this and I can do this and I can do that, you know. Yeah. So we use a lot of that, you know, especially with you know, our, our, into our financial and, you know, uh, communications and text and email and reminding when, you know, payments are due or payments should be, you know, accounts receivable, accounts payable, um, drive of settlements, you know, we use that. So we, you know, we've really been playing around with that. I mean, the big goal for us is, you know, and I think a lot of trucking companies go this way is find out what works for us and then hand it to a developer and say, this is what we need. You know, we need yeah. something that works like this. And then we make it an origin system. And that just, you know, we take out the stuff we don't need. We put the stuff in there we need and we make it, you know, beautiful for all. But I mean, at the, at the end of the day, yeah. it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta have more than 10 trucks to do that stuff. So that's just kind of one yeah, of those. Yeah, for sure. And there's you know. benchmarks to it. I think the cool thing though about automation is it doesn't call in sick, right? <laughs> so yeah, exactly. versus a person and you can have people manage the process or oversee a process. Um, but with automation, it just happens. It's a beautiful thing. And Zapier. Yeah. You mentioned it's a rabbit hole, the new YouTube. If you're a nerd like, uh, you and I in like the tech side of things and trying to perfect this, and it might just be a business owner thing. I don't know. I spent so many hours on that. Like, okay, <laughs> doing this, doing that. And then you build all this elaborate stuff and like you scrap that, you're like, nah, we do something else and figure something else out. But man, that's cool. I've never heard of this. That's, that's, that's why you work with me. You just do what you do, man. I'll handle that stuff. <laughs> so that's kind of cool, man. Yes. Awesome. What's uh, anything big or exciting on the roadmap for this next year for you, John? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, you know, our, our biggest, we're, we're in grind season right now, for sure. I mean, we got our trucks, we got our trailers, you know, we're, we're kind of in that position where now it's just, you know, let's fine tune the, let's fine tune what we got and, and get ready for the next rounds. I mean, we're not, we're like you, like you and I spoke, we're not looking to uh, probably expand much more until Q3, Q4 of next year. Yep. That's when we're having, we're planning for more equipment and, and uh, you know, trailers and trucks to drop. And uh, that's good. You know, we, we need that time. But, I mean, our, our major focus this year is uh, process procedure. I mean, it was last year as well, but process and procedure, fine-tuning these, uh, you know, what we spoke about, um, hiring processes, safety, training for guys, making sure that guys, you know, feel, you know, that they understand what we're doing and that communication between a team. Um, and, you know, that's going to take that's gonna take every bit of that time in between now and, and Q3 for sure. So, um, for now it's, you know, we're just, we're just, uh, you know, fine tuning what we already have and, and focusing on that. Head, head down, baby. We got it. Yep. Head down, hey, head uh, down. Something that kind of popped in. I know I'm guilty and it took a long time for me to figure out. And especially when you have so much responsibility or projects or things that you want to get accomplished, if you're a motivated individual like you and myself, or even producer like Ryan, how do you manage your time, man? Like you got all these things you want to do, all these projects to like divvy out. And it's like, oh, I got a rabbit hole of Zapier. I've got stuff I want to do here. I need the process and um, procedures and stuff like that. What do you do to manage that? Man, uh, <laughs> next question. Put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it's, that, that's, a, that's a work in progress in itself. I think that's, it's one, it's probably the most important thing, you know, I think is that, 
uh, people like, you know, the three of us have to figure out is how to manage your time. Because again, at the beginning of this conversation, you realize that time is always, you know, it's worth a lot more than money. However, to actually take action on that and, and practice that is tough. Yeah. Um, you, you know, you're, you're, especially in this stage in the business, you know, you're at that stage where it's not like you can say, oh no, I have three or four hours dedicated to this. I'll get to this thing later. You know, it doesn't work that, doesn't work like that. You know, you gotta yeah, take care of, <laughs> yeah it, for anybody right i mean it's like you can't just you, you know push it you push life aside for things you know but um i i try my best to you know uh create morning routines the earlier i get up the better um admittedly you know like most people when i first wake up at like 4 or four thirty in the morning i'm like what am i doing like why couldn't i just have uh, stayed you know back three years ago you know or whatever but uh um it's really important for me individually to get up before most everybody else just because that's my quiet time you know it's uh, that's my time that i can sit there and, and think and clear my mind and, and and try to focus on the day and then and then what's also worked for me um I, I know some people go back and forth is planning the night before or trying to you know uh for what's important and then constantly going through my to-do list or things i would like to do and then putting them in levels of importance because you know i i use like an inbox you know system that i write all these crazy ideas down origin tms you know uh, parking systems, you know, uh, you know, warehousing, you know, tra all this stuff that we're like years away from actually completing. And I, I go through that constantly and kind of move them and say, okay, John, you know, like this isn't going to, this is not like a, this next month thing. Let's, let's put this out and stop, you know, don't distract ourselves, you know, let's focus on, uh, the, you know, the, the safety and compliance of what we're, what we're doing and training for, you know, drivers. Yeah. I think for me too, one thing that's hard, I, I don't know if you struggle with this cam and if you don't, I need some tips here is it's really tough to uh, work on the things that don't interest you when, especially when you're, no one's over your shoulder saying, get this done mm -hmm. and the things that interest you and you have to delegate that time properly or it will come back and bite you. And uh, I've, I've learned that a, a few times, you know, it's, it's really important to tackle those, those dirty, those dirty chores and get them over with so you can go back to doing what you like. Yeah, man. I think to answer that question is it takes a lot of discipline, right? And that's the difference between a lot of uh, high level earners or achievers in their discipline or whatever field they are in is that they will do the shit that nobody else wants to do and they have to get it done. They know they have to get it done. Part of an approach that I adopted years ago was um, kind of twofold. One, I have every year I'll plan my goals, call them rocks or whatever. So I've got three major items that I need to accomplish. If it's going to be my best year I've ever had, I look at those things. And it's not just business, but you can apply it to business or your personal life or health or relationships, whatever. And then you map out your quarterly, monthly, weekly, even down to your daily things. On the daily level or granular, granular level, I do block scheduling. So within my week, certain days, I have certain things that I have to get done. Part of that would be like, hey, these are my three to five year projects. So once a month or once a week or I've gotten an hour or two hours dedicated where like I shut it off. Um, obviously I'm available for fires. All my clients got my cell phone and stuff like that. But outside of that, unless it's urgent, you know, it's like, bam, I focus my energy on that. You know, it's like setting aside time, right. you know, when you booked this podcast, you'll notice there's only certain times available to book this. I just don't let you book any time on my schedule because it just <laughs> wouldn't work for me that way. Right. But I'm more effective, mm -hmm. more efficient. Um, and you know, you mentioned the accountability piece when you have no one looking over your shoulder. I actually have a buddy of mine who is in New, uh, New York, Syracuse, New York, and um, similar age, similar um, situation. He actually is a business owner as well. Family, two kids, kind of the same thing. So I can bounce ideas off of him, whether it's family, relationship, business, projects, my motivations. You know, he listens to me. He's like, man, you're fucking crazy trying to like do that. But <laughs> He, he can hold me yeah. accountable, too, because each week I'm like, okay, this is what we're going to do. And same, he'll say, okay, I'm going to do these things. We get together next week. Well, we're calling each other out on what we said we were going to get done, right? And so it's uh, we call them WAM meetings, weekly accountability meetings. So I went and found someone to hold me accountable. I try to get feedback from that, my team, yeah. business partners, obviously, like you and Travis, um, employees or drivers or producers to get the feedback and say, Hey, what am I missing? Um, what am I failing? What am I not delivering on to you guys as like my personal sphere? And then, uh, 
just try to receive feedback and be open to that. So, but it's a, con like you said, it's a constant work in progress, man. If you can just accomplish 70, 80% of what you set out to do, cause I know you'd set your bar high, you're going to do more than most people would ever dream of doing. So. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. One, one thing to follow up on that too, that's super important, at least for me. And it, 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 this isn't completely me just trying to get brownie points is, you know, uh, having a spouse or a partner that can deal with your nonsense. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, that's wife, huge for me. For like, <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, you know, uh, yeah, my wife, Maria, you know, we've been together for, uh, you know, a little bit over 11 years and just, uh, ups and downs, but you got to have that. And, and she is, she's kind of that for me. She, she pushes, you know, she's a little bit kinder about it. Well, sometimes, but you know, she pushes me and says, you know, you, you gotta go. Like if I have to go travel, I have to go do something. She's like, you gotta go. This is important. We gotta do this. Um, and to have that person that's closest to you besides my married partner, you know, Travis, basically, you know, like he's my second marriage, you would say, yeah, um, besides, besides that, when you have those two and, and they're rather, they're empowering you rather than like pull you back, man, yeah. that's important. I just, uh, you know, that's, uh, you wake up every day and you th when you got a partner like that, I mean, I think, I think anything's possible. You kind of. You know, yeah, that's uh, get, get through. You get through the thick and thin, regardless. That support, yeah, for yeah. sure. And I want them to call me out on my bullshit too. You know, um, they totally. don't. They don't have yeah. to understand my thought process or my vision because it might. It, it's it, obviously everyone's vision's different, right? Everyone might mm -hmm. have the same goal potentially, maybe not. It's your business. You know, it's your goal, your ambitions, your drive. Um, they don't have to understand it. They just need to know and understand you. And can you deliver? And like, are you? Um, like you said, oh man, I'm, I don't want to squirrel. <laughs> the, hey, new idea. Right. Nope. New idea. Nope. You have someone to bounce <laughs> some things off for. And it's like, Hey, here's the idea, yeah. but here's how we're going to execute it. And here's what it's going to do. And if you can share that with your team and like be open communication with them and you put intentional thought, well, now they can actually buy in and I don't need the buy-in, let the results buy them in. Um, but they will understand why you're doing it. And so, and if it, if it's right. like, absolutely like, dude, you can't do that or just call you out on your bullshit or you're messing or you're slipping. I suppose my wife has no issue calling me out <laughs> at all, but yeah, she's my good. biggest that, support though. Yeah. And advocate. It's the reason we can do what we do, man, is you nailed that on the head. I need a safe place and a safe person when I come back from battle, if you will. So yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, man. That's awesome. Well, uh, so, to be respectful of your time, we're starting to near a little bit of the end. So is there any uh, parting wisdom you would love to share with any of these, uh, entrepreneurs, truck drivers, fleet managers, owners, whoever's listening. Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing I could say is just don't be, don't be scared to put your head down and fail. I mean, take the risk. I mean, risk, risk is a good thing. Risk isn't a bad thing. Um, and failure is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. You know, I, I think that, you know, you don't want to be, you know, try to try to practice not being risk adverse, you know, in, in, in when you're building a business, you know, be smart about it, educate yourself about it, but don't be scared to fail. And if you make mistakes and slip and fall, just forgive yourself, learn from it and keep walking, you know, and, and, and also take the responsibility for it, you know, take the responsibility for the failure. And, you know, you're going to be, it's amazing what you can achieve just by that, just by those two things, you know, I mean, I'm yeah. definitely not the smartest person in the world, not even close, you know, it's, uh, um, but just being able to put your head down and, and move forward and, and, treat others right, you know, create that culture with people, man. I think that's, that's the biggest thing. You don't have to have everything in order to make things work. Just, you know, just go forward. I mean, one foot after another, it's okay. You know, I mean, that's, that's the biggest advice. Everything else is, you know, debatable and you can get opinions on it and, right. you know, and, and, and your story is going to change every day. So yeah. don't, don't look too deep into it. And my second word of advice is you guys need to come down to Vegas and hang out. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's easy. I'm, wait, I'm, wait, I'm waiting for you guys to come down, Preach. and then I'll come see I'll, I'll come see you, Ryan, in Canada when it uh, clears up over there. It is beautiful, though. I will say that. It is, man. Yeah, <laughs> come visit any time, and I I'm sure yeah. I'll be in Vegas soon. So <laughs> I'll be down in yeah, uh, uh, Mesquite here. Um, Mesquite this next week, which is obvious, <laughs> but I'll be I'll be springboarding from Vegas to uh, Mesquite there. So um, we'll we'll link up on that for sure. Yeah, I know for sure. I, you guys, you guys are always welcome. It's on me. Let's go eat some good food. Yeah. That's what Vegas is about. Yes, buddy. Yeah, hey, it, John. Thank you so much for your time. Um, I really do appreciate it. I think uh, there's so much value in there, and and I like hearing from 
different perspectives of the industry from owner ops to guys like yourself or you know everything in between so thank you so much man mm -hmm. i appreciate it uh, thank you both i appreciate what you guys are doing for the industry man you guys are awesome and yeah grateful every day for your guys relationship thank you thanks ryan yeah all thanks, right man. appreciate you thank you everybody Take for listening uh, make sure to go give this a follow or like on uh, itunes or apple for the apple fans we got spotify for the non-apple fans but pretty much we're on any platform also we do have a facebook group which john will not see because he's not in facebook so get a load of this trucking you can follow <laughs> us on linkedin follow valley trucking um, insurance.com if you guys have any questions or have any guests that you want to put on feel free to reach out to me man i'm on facebook social linkedin um, you can get a hold of us so uh, that concludes an episode of